Hey, good morning. Um, how are you all doing today? Good. Pretty good. Pretty good considering the ungodly hour of the day. Mm, yeah. <laughs> No worries, no worries. I, I I completely understand. So you know, I I woke up at eight o'clock in the morning today just to go to work. <laughs> so um, so today, welcome all of you to Real In Films. Today, we're going to be talking about a little bit of the unabridged Miss Vera's Day Book. And I gotta say, um, at first when I saw the artwork, I was like, uh, I was like, this is interesting. And then when I just sat down and enjoyed the whole documentary, uh, the document the documentary brought more than just a a story. It's a journey, and um, this this documentary will touch a lot of lives uh, in the sense that to keep moving forward and to not give up, and to be yourself. So I wanted to ask uh, Robert, uh, firstly, what inspired you to bring um michael's and david's story to to the world um <clears throat> thanks john uh it was meeting them it, that's what that's what did it um i was i was referred to them from uh, a subject from my previous film and when i met with michael first of all i saw his apartment you see it in the film you know they live in side by side apartments and their places are absolutely mind boggling you know it's every cartoon pop art counterculture trinket you know retro fashion you know everything so i was i was on a little bit of a of a, a sensory overload when I when I walked into Michael's apartment and then he showed me the the daybook photos and um, historical pictures of the Vera Sphere in the Pride Parade and I was hooked. That's that's amazing. And so, Michael David, what what mainly inspired you both? You know, to to just embrace your creativity and bringing to the world the verisphere and and your style for me um creativity has always been my um escape if you will from a rather difficult childhood and, and moving around and being isolated <clears throat> excuse me so uh it's just always been a conduit for me it brings me into the world that grounds me you know it um reminds me that I'm still here, you know, because you can just disappear into the wall if you've got severe depression or any illness that isolated you, not just uh, the HIV stuff. So for me, it was it was that. I mean, in, in every aspect, even before I met David, was to get out there, be among a community. And as of, at the time, I was considerably younger, and I thought, well, if I'm going to die, I should know what community that I'm going to be a part of. Uh, will be like and maybe I can learn things and I was probably 23 or so when I found out I was HIV positive and that's a long time ago and David I always felt that um you know it was just not really an option to be any other way <laughs> um it's uh uh it's just um oh what do I want to say um uh sorry I'm drawing a blank it's too early it's too early we're both creatively inclined. I mean, that was the thing. David's intuitive understanding of color and, and his ability to paint. And I, I always say to people, I've done everything, puppets, videos, what have you, and my medium is color. And it's like, I, I was never going to be normal, um, but I didn't want to be boring. So I just sort of leaned into, into um, you know, finding a way to express that so that I, I felt, you know, uh, my integrity was was front and center for And let me just add to their their story. Every time I go over or went over to to shoot or chat with them or anything like that, there was always creating going on. I mean, it was it's it's like an explosion of creativity just walking into their place and then <clears throat> they're actively working. You know, every time um we would set up a shoot or something, David's at his table sewing you know, or gluing. And Michael's usually the tour guide, 
you know, taking us around. He says, I think David's still working on some hats two days before Pride, you know, and these creations. And yeah, yeah. And Michael's usually telling me on the side, sorry, David, you know, it's hard to get him away from, you know, to like relax, to like get him away from continuing the process. And, uh, you know, I wish he would just take some time for himself. Um, so they're they're always at it. They're being modest, but uh, I saw it. That's amazing. So, Robert, I wanted to 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 ask because you know, throughout throughout the film, you do see a lot of like, uh, past, present, and and the now. Um, were there any like uh obstacles for you while you were filming the now, um, while for the documentary? No, I, I, the only obstacle was COVID. <laughs> you know, we uh, we were going to uh, at the, the end of the film got, you know, got stopped. And the, the way we were planning the end of the film was to be David painting the mural, which you see. Um, we turned that into a whole COVID section um, after the fact when we were able to like move about, you know, mostly with masks on and go back and, and shoot David uh, finishing the mural. But just as he had started COVID hit and that was, you know, that was the end of our film was going to be, you know, kind of uh, David back to painting. They were talking about doing other things besides Vera Sphere and David was talking about returning to painting. So that was, that was our biggest obstacle. But no, everything kind of landed, you know, Michael had the, this wonderful archive of past, you know, video and photos, and there were other filmmakers, Emma, right? Is that right, Michael? Right. The, yeah. yeah, yeah, she had uh, created a short film and let us use parts of that. And so, you know, the, the, the gods of footage, you know, were were bestowing gifts to us. Um, and then COVID, which, you know, screwed everybody up. Going we were on. lucky to have that early footage because um, back then it just, just didn't get a lot of documentation that way. So we always tried to do as much as we could. Um, but with this film, it's, uh, it's so well documented. And it's a real relief. Yeah, going going to that topic of, of COVID, because you got you in the film, it does touch uh, touch bases on it. So. For Michael and for David, how 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 did it affect it, uh, both of you creatively um, throughout uh, this th throughout the process of COVID? Because we were basically almost a year and a half locked down. So how did it affect it, both of you? You know, uh, creatively and as you as people. Well, different. I mean, we were we were different in that approach. Um, David will let you know in a second, but <clears throat> I just took advantage of the time. Of course, I wasn't happy with it. But it let me work on my archiving. I would walk every day about five miles if I could with my little mask and just to, to stay again grounded and see what's happening around me. Uh, so I, I found it not quite as challenging, you know, save the restaurants and everything being closed. But in, in here, I just thought, oh, good. Now I can go work on that collection of punk posters I've had for years or put these photographs of this together or, you know, compile these photo uh, libraries because I have thousands of photos. David, conversely, I'll let you take it from there. Um, yeah, uh, my creativity was sort of shut down by COVID in a way that I had experienced before. Um, I'm always making stuff and I, I just didn't feel like making it. I didn't feel like participating, um, um, which is interesting because the first pandemic, HIV, that was more about like my own health issues and what's going to happen to me. But um, and I can always find a way to use humor and stuff to deal with that. But with COVID, it was more about, you know, I was upset over what people were doing to each other. You know, it didn't really, it wasn't as closely connected to me, although we were all worried about getting it. Um, but it's just, I got really disillusioned by, you know, what the rest of the country was doing. And I, I just, I shut down a little bit. Um, and, you know, in a way, it's like I lost two years of creativity time. But, you know, it, it came back. So, Well, it was very triggering, too, uh, the, the whole COVID concept and this virus that kills people practically instantly. And as I said in the film, at least with HIV, we could hug each other. 
um, we couldn't, you know, and our whole thing is contact, contact. So I hated not being around our friends and doing things. But uh, the trigger was more like, well, we understand virus, we understand vaccine, we understand all of that. What's wrong with the rest of the world? <laughs> Especially some places in America, they were just disregarding and being reckless and fine. You have the right to not want to get vaccinated, but the kind of negativity that was going on around it, then Asians being blamed and all the racism, that was, I mean, that was even, you know, to me worse than the HIV era because it was focused on gays more than anything back then. No, vaccines, yeah. It's like, yeah. No, yeah, I, I completely, I completely understand because, you know, um, me being, uh, me having a lot of friends that are from the LB, the LGBTQ plus community, you know, sometimes they are, um, marginalized because they're different. And, and then we're like, but what, why is being different bad? You know what I mean? Um, yeah. so wanted to make a general question for all of you. Is there a moment of the documentary that you guys take to heart, you know, to this day, uh, that moment that you guys filmed or a moment that you relive on the documentary? Do you guys take it to heart? Robert, I'll let you. Oh, my. Um, <clears throat> you know, I had fun being inspired by Michael and David, <clears throat> and they brought out they wanted they made me bring, my, you know, trot my humor out. So it was always fun to think of, of of ways that that we could laugh, you know, in in the face of a somewhat um, tragic story at the beginning. Um, but I think your question was, was there a moment? You know, it, it was probably um, doing the Three's Company skit that we did. Um, you know, it was it was so much fun, and they were always so on board. Um, those are the those those kind of moments. You know, I really loved filming everything, and I take that back. I did love the Three's Company stuff, but when they had all the costumes in in the garage and people coming over, there was just an electricity in the air. And you you should see these two outfitting people. I mean. They kind of knew. They just kind of look at their body. They kind of assess their personality, and they just start pulling hats and costumes, and sometimes shoes and jewelry and dresses made out of magazines, and you know all kinds of things. And the people would just light up. They would just, and they had big, you know, um, full length mirrors, so everybody could see themselves as they were getting dressed. So I think those moments were the ones that, uh, that I'll always remember. I think it's interesting too, uh, at every screening um, of the film, everybody kind of laughs at the same moment and they all cry at the same moment. It's like, and I do too. It's like, for me, the most, you know, it's, it's watching yourself on, on film. It isn't necessarily, you know, something I like to do. Um, but, you know, I think Robert got some real genuine moments of, of honesty out of us that are, you know, like, it's a little hard to look at. And uh, people really respond to that, that intensity of, you know, what we're feeling. And for me, I mean, there are a few. Um, I think one regard, um, I may mean, want to acknowledge that had Robert not come along to do the film, I'm not sure I would have ever compiled uh, photos and videos and things like that. You know, I just thought maybe one day, but not really. I, I, it took it took so much to get there. But to look back and see the names project stuff, I sort of I don't exactly relive it, but this emotional thing happens every time I see, you know, the pictures I took at that event and that I participated. There's a lot for me in that way. Um, and then uh, as far as joyful, there's just so many funny bits. I love that we got the baby trailer in there. And I love that we have all our friends talking. And the last thing I'll say is profound to me was us sitting in the convertible looking back to see a hundred and odd 
costumes for our 25th, we were always on the ground in front. We never really got to see straight back. And here we are up a bit. I'm looking back and, and um, you know, Robert's team, Robert and his team got amazing footage that I would, you know, you don't think about it. You're just doing, doing, doing. And all of a sudden you go, oh my God, look, look back there. What's going on? So that was incredibly, it still is to me when I see that where we start marching. And I like, I would never ask my friends, like, what do you love about us? What's so great about us? You, don't you know, it's like, I, it's, it would just never <laughs> even occur to me to, to phrase it that way. But the movie is so beautiful because they're all just volunteering these very different takes on what, what has drawn them in and is so effective for them. And it, you know, it's just, you can really feel how, how genuine, um, you know, the emotions are for, for everyone um, who comes to this weird thing that we're doing. So my my final initial uh my final question would be for all of you once again can you guys um express yourselves like in general to the to to the public on what they should not what they should do but what to like you know what words would you provide to the public in regards to like moving forward and and accept change you know, and just keep just keep fighting for for what they want because that's one of the main focuses of the documentary as well. So, do you guys have any words that you would like to to provide to to the public? Well, we we I think it's important when you're facing dark things to do it uh, with as much light as possible. You know, and it's like you just have to give yourself permission to to look at things in the the way that you can manage to look at them. So we're just always about encouraging like the, the individual to find their, their own path, whether it's something fun or something serious, but to just just you know let the the real world in to the extent that you're comfortable with it. And for me, it um there's a there's a couple of aspects, the intergenerational aspect of people understanding or seeing something from the past that they're not being taught and you know they're they're not gonna know about it. We've had people brought, come up to me like 18, 19 year olds and go, oh my God, I had no idea it was that bad. And I thought, wow, I think that was bad. But you know, I I have the um the, 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 the history with it. So intergenerationally, what's also nice is my peers, uh, I'm in my 60s, so there's a lot of people that were in my situation that did survive, have survived and who were not necessarily HIV, but are still here surviving as seniors. So I, the crossover, you know, it, it, it kind of, I find that it, it, what we do brings different ages, different uh, uh, genders. We don't care what people are into. And you've seen those costumes. It's like <laughs> the whole idea is to not be whatever you think your worst is, because some people are so self-conscious. I mean, every, everyone suffers and everyone has problems. But, um, you know, I just try to be like, well, it's not the end of the world to have problems. You know, you just, you know, the character just wears all those problems visually. Um, but it, so it's okay. It's like, whatever your problems are, my problems are worse. And I, that's like, um, I think people get a, a laugh out of that. You know, that it, it gives them, it gives them permission to relax about themselves um, and, and take a risk with being silly um, that we don't often encourage people to do in society, Robert. How about you, Robert? Well, you know, I think, you know, how do I top both of those things? Those are so great. And I, and I'm fully on board with that, but I think, especially, you know, being an independent filmmaker and, um, you know, we don't have a lot of studio backing. We don't have a lot of investors because we don't want investors to tell us what to do. So for any independent filmmaker or anybody that's doing an art project, um, you know, just perseverance, just keep at it, keep at it, just keep your vision. Don't let it get you down. You know, every day I walk my dog for four miles up and down hills you know, basically so I can eat whatever I want, but I do it no matter what. And I never want to do it. It's like going to the gym, you know, you never want to go to the gym, but you always walk out feeling amazing, you know, just, just do it. You know, I, I feel like a Nike ad, um, 
But uh, yeah, keep your vision. Go after it. That's it. It's not not when. That's sort of our motto. Is like, uh, you know, do it, do it. Strike while the iron is hot. And and, uh, looking forward, we're hoping to um, generate some interest in creating a book of our work because I have lots and lots of photographs of the Daybook series and of the people that slowly came in and created our tribe and also documentation of the workshops. So kind of what you saw in the film, only like a series of selected stills. And here's a straw and here's this one photo and then here's what we made from it. And then another one of here's what someone looks like wearing. it. So the concept is there. It's just a matter of getting an interest. So hopefully we'll get to that point where if the film's exposed more and more as it is, there might be some interest. No, that's, that's and hopefully amazing. your show here will generate enough excitement from the public to step <laughs> forward. Someone will step forward and say, "I'm going to make that book for you." That would be that would be that's amazing. Right. Right. <laughs> it's all on you, John. Well, the movie is thanks. <laughs> thanks, man. No, no, thanks thank, for that promise. Thank, thank you, thank you all, really, Michael, David, and Robert. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm gonna be honest. You know, I'm, I'm one of the type of people that, that I don't, I don't mind the color of shirt I'm wearing. I don't care if people are looking at me weird because I am wearing something that supposedly I'm not supposed to wear. Right now, I'm wearing my wife's jacket that has Mulan on it and Queen. So I rock it like there's no tomorrow. <laughs> you know, That's- but. That's exactly it. <laughs> you know, uh, but I uh, really, really thank you very much um, for giving me the chance to talk about the Underbridge Miss Vera's Day uh, book for all of our viewers. It's going to be available in VOD and all digital platforms on August 1st. I will leave the link on our description, but that you guys can click on it, pre-order it, or rent it. Just watch this amazing documentary. Um, it's it's just an experience and an inspiration. Thank you all of you for giving us the time to speak about the film.